Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to build a construction loan draw from scratch. New analysts are often stumped by the logic behind circular references, so this video will hopefully clear up a lot of the confusion, but at the end of the day you still need to spend time practicing the logic to get comfortable with it. If you'd like to read the steps, there will be a link to the corresponding blog post in the description below. As you can see, I've partially built out the spreadsheet so we can spend time on the formulas as opposed to basic formatting. To start, we need a development cost before financing item, which is in row 13. I've just made up a bunch of numbers, but they are spread out similar to an S-curve, and they equal 4.5 million. And we'll begin by writing the formulas for the equity draws, because you normally won't draw on the construction loan until all equity has been funded, and we'll do that down here. Then we'll write the formulas for the construction loan and sync everything up so the circular references take effect and size the loan. Okay, so let's start with our equity draws. And what we need to do is we need to estimate how much equity we're going to need for the deal. So to do that, let's take uh, 1 minus 65%. So that's going to be 35%. And we'll multiply that times the development cost before financing. We got a million five seven five. So let's link that up in month zero because that's the beginning balance we're going to start with and we're going to draw down from that. So I formatted the screen just since it's a linked cell. And our equity draws will be the minimum of the beginning balance and the development cost before financing. And then our ending balance will simply be the beginning balance minus the equity draws. And then for month one, which is the next month, we will take the previous month's ending balance. And then we can copy this across and you'll see how it starts to draw down. And over here in column J, you can see that there's only $75,000 left in equity, but we need to fund 750000 so we fund that 75000 and then the rest of it, the 675000 is going to flow down to the construction loan. And so we can start to build that out next. And to do so, let's begin with the beginning balance. And that's simply going to be the previous month's ending balance. And we just referenced the previous month back here. That's why, and since month zero is the first month, we keep column E empty just to be able to do that. Now our loan draws are going to be the development cost before financing minus the equity draws. And what we can do is we can add a max function that says return the maximum of that and zero, just so this never returns a negative number. It's just good housekeeping in your models. And then we have our capitalized loan fees. So what we want to happen is we want the loan fees to accrue in the first month that we draw down the loan. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to use an if and statement because there's two criteria that we need to meet. So if and, if the sum of all the previous months will lock in the column equals zero and the current month is greater than zero, we want to return the loan fees, lock that in, times the construction loan with interest and fees. Otherwise, return zero. We don't have anything up here yet, but this will populate once we reach our circular reference. And our interest accrual is simply the interest rate, annual interest rate, locked in, divided by 12 times the beginning balance. And then finally, our principal repayment you can do this in a dynamic manner in models, and this is what we do in our uh, development models, but in this case, let's just say there's a repayment in month 15. We're gonna, we have a takeout loan in month 15, we have to repay it. So if the month equals 15, we'll lock that in, we are going to take the inverse sum, the negative sum of everything, otherwise return zero, and that's everything in this time period. And their ending balance is the sum of everything in this time period. So the principal repayment, we're saying we want the negative sum because we want this to return a negative so we can sum it all up and watch. We'll copy this across using Control-R. And here we go. We repay everything 
three million thirty four thousand and change in month fifteen, and that's the previous month's ending balance plus our um, interest accrual for that period. And there's the payoff. So let's check this out. Our debt sizing before reserves would be 65% times the total development cost before financing, 2,925. Our loan draws, 2,925, okay? Then we have capitalized loan fees, zero for right now, and our interest accrual, 109,000. And then our principal repayments, equal zero. So this is the issue. We don't have any money to pay the interest accrual while we're constructing the building. So the bank's going to fund a portion of this, but then how do they size the loan? Well, that's why we need a circular reference. We could sum all this up and we'll see it equals zero. So let's go up here. Actually, let's go to total financing costs first and let's add this up. Our total financing costs Capitalize loan fees in each period plus our interest accrual. And then our total development costs will be the sum of the development costs before financing and the total financing costs. We'll copy that across. And then we can sum these up. So we have 109000 right now, not including our capitalized loan fees yet. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our construction loan with interest and fees which will be the negative of the payoff amount because that's the total amount we need to borrow with interest and fees. And you'll see it goes up because the capitalized loan fees are now included. And this number right here returns a zero, even though it's formatted as accounting, which means there's some very small decimal located uh, in this number. So why don't we just round this to two decimal places and it's back to zero. That often happens with circular references. It'll get close, but not perfect. And so then let's figure out our effective loan to cost. Well, our effective loan to cost is the construction loan with interest and fees divided by the total development costs, and that includes our financing costs. So that's 66.18%. So we have to change the 66.18% to be 65%. And to do that, we use this D7 as a control. So why don't we do 64%? Okay, that's 65.2, 63.80, and that gets us to 65%. And it does that by sizing the equity that's originally drawn down over here. So we can check this. We'll take uh, the equity plus the construction loan with interest and fees, and that's 4654029, and so is our total development costs. So that is how you build a construction loan draw with circular references. And for the circular references to function properly, you want to make sure your options in Excel are set properly. So what we'll do is we'll go Alt-TO to Options. Let's click on Formulas. Enable iter iterative calculations, excuse me, must be checked. And then let's also check automatic except for data tables. If this isn't checked, then it's just automatic. If you have data tables in your model, it's going to slow everything down each time you make a change. And so there we go. Let me know if you have any questions.